Hi, it's Wednesday morning, almost Friday, and we are here with uh, the second episode um, of our series. Hi, Wukash. Hey, Tomek. Yeah, so uh, what we are going to talk about today, uh, today we are going to talk about the, um, we will show you an example of implementing the event sourcing on a very simple model. Uh, last time, in the last episode, we showed you what the event sourcing is, and uh, today we would like to, um, we would like to actually implement it. <clears throat> so let's jump into the mirror board uh, first, and then when we discuss the model, we will jump into the uh, IDE, and we will code something. Yeah. So first of all, we wanted to have some kind of simple model here, so we decided to do the uh, task uh, as you know them from the to do lists uh, as in all <laughs> getting started examples. Uh, but yeah, we really wanted to have something simple uh, here um, and to show you the alternative uh, way of implementing your models. So uh, first of all, on the, let's say, uh, on the yellow card, you see the, the, the model itself, the name of the model. And on the left-hand side, you can see the all, uh, we call them commands, but let's uh, say they, are, they will be method names, right, Lukash? Or the yeah, exactly. They will just represent the methods that you can execute on the task class. Exactly. And then if this method happened, we have on the right-hand side, we have um, events that we are going to store in our uh, event store. Um, you can see those cards here as well, where we, um, where we have some kind of rules that we can change the name when the task is open. Or for example, we can uh, reopen the task uh, when it's completed. Um, and we can delete when it's open. So if we, uh, if we want to show the states and the state change on the graph, you can see that you can, uh, you can have the open state, you can go to completed, using the complete method, then reopen to open, but if you delete the task, it's deleted and you cannot reopen it. Um, <clears throat> and I think we, that, that's it, right? When it comes to the visualization of the, of the model, right? Ah, okay, one more thing. On the very right-hand side, you have the uh, green cards that represent read models, but we, we are not going to talk about them uh, today. Um, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. We'll uh, we'll show you an alternative way, uh, which I wouldn't call much better, uh, but just maybe a good for a start. How you can actually retrieve the state of your object if you need to display its uh, properties somewhere, for example, in the UI. It's not preferred, however, just for the simplicity of this task, just to uh, for of this uh, presentation to show you some mechanics, uh, it should be enough to uh, to start with. But we'll get there soon. So let's jump uh, into the code, right? Yes. Um, let's go to the ID. Okay. Uh, so what you can see on the screen is the uh, class, which is a task. As you can notice, it doesn't inherit from the application record. So there is a slightly uh, the slight difference that um, you have uh, then, like in comparison to what you normally would have as a model. Um, also, there is the uh, initializer uh, or constructor which sets the status to initial value. And it has a couple of methods, right? Those methods, um, they are the state changes. We'll get into that really soon. I'll show you the task service first. So the task service has those, um, it represents those blue cards that Tomek uh, talked about. So there is a create task uh, method that represents the blue card and the change name, delete task, and so on. And we also have the events in here that represent the orange cards, right? So for example, there is the task completed uh, event uh, that is an instance of the class task completed, which actually inherits from Rails event store event class. Uh, this is how we defined all of the events in the repository. Mm, all right, so uh, also I mentioned that you are able to, you'll be able to retrieve the properties of the task. Uh, but I'll show you that after we get into some tests because it'll be easier to understand. So let's take a look at the test. 
uh, let's take a look at this uh, case, for example. Or maybe let's start with the most simple one. Uh, so when we create a task, when we create a task, uh, we re uh, return the UUID. So this is the unique ID uh, that we uh, generate to be able to uh, then to have some handle for this task. Um, the each task, as you can see in here, so when the task is created, we publish an event and we publish it to the certain stream. Certain stream uh, keeps all the events related to the task, right? So that's why it's distinguished by this unique identifier, which is generated by a uh, secure random. Um, and then when it comes to the test, um, so we create a new task and then we read the stream for this specific task, right? For now, we only called one method, which produced one event. So we expect that there is only one event in this stream and that it has the class of task created and that in the data, this is how I can access the data of the event, right? There is this uh, list of the events. I take the last one, I check the data and I can fetch the task ID and I want it to be equal to the uh, unique identifier that was generated. Okay, but that's very simple task. Um, that's a very simple test example. Let's go back to the uh, reopening one. Um, by the way, this repository is public. It's on the RKNC GitHub uh, repository. Um, I think Tomek will get, like insert or <laughs> insert maybe uh, present the link somewhere, right? Maybe yeah. in the video if if we can do that. <laughs> but if not, it will be available in the description. Um, all right, so then uh, we are now in this case where the completed task can be reopened. So let's go through this test. First of all, we of course create the task service. When we do that, we create a task once again and get the handle to the uh, unique identifier. Uh, later on, we complete that task and what we can do later, we can reopen that task. So now the stream should have three events, right? C task created task completed and task reopened. And this is what we can check in the test, right? So we read the stream and we check that there are, there are three events in the stream and uh, we take the last one. That's what this test is checking. And it checks that uh, the last task is actually the uh, reopened task and that it has the task ID equal to this uh, unique identifier that was returned. Okay, last but not least, um, uh, let's go through the one more test case just to show you different type of the data that we can keep in the event um, that is not just the ID. Uh, so once again, we create a task and then there's this uh, difference, we assign the date. And when we assign the date, obviously the date is the object, right? The date object. Um, then we read the stream and we check that once again, we check the class and then we fetch the data as you can see, what the race event store is doing for you, it's already uh, capable of converting the data from JSON, because the data is stored as a JSON, uh, to data objects, right? So you can, um, in very handful manner, just use the equal uh, to check that your date is actually the date that was published. So I would say that's uh, very handy. Okay, so uh, now I mentioned that uh, you're able to actually just investigate how the object looks like inside. So in order to do that, uh, this test is doing pretty much what we already talked about, uh, but uh, we have this find task method here that returns the task. And the task is just an object. And uh, as you can see, you can access its properties, right? You can access the ID, you can access the name, you can access date, status, and just check um, what it's uh, what it is, and you can make assertions on that in the test. But obviously, you could also uh, use it in your uh, application for whatever you need. So, what is this find task method doing? So, um, as you see, we pass the task ID. We just uh, create a new task, just a simple object, and then using the event store, which is uh, Rails Rails event store, we read the stream with the task of this ID, right? So the stream contains all the events that we published related to this model for the certain identifier, right? Um, so uh, normally, as we mentioned in the previous video, in the relational database, that would be just one state. In here, we have the, all the events that represent the state changes. And for each event, we call the apply method, which I'll just show you in one uh, in second, and then we return the task object 
uh, with the properties that are, let's say, um, initialized to just to be used. Um, and the apply method is just a simple switch case and it takes the, the event as a parameter and then depending on what's the event type, it is applying the data or calling the methods. So as you can see for the task created, it sets the ID. For the change name, it's calling the change name method, which just sets the name from the, uh, from the event, right? You are already familiar with the event data fetch. It fetches the name and set is uh, on the object level. Same with the assign date, complete, delete, and reopen. And uh, yeah, that, that class, as you can see, I, I think it's uh, pretty simple. It just uh, looks almost like an active record class. Uh, would you add something, Tomek, to that? And that was actually our point, right? So we wanted to have some kind of model. Uh, I know Lukasz mentioned that it's maybe not recommended one, but we wanted to have some kind of model that is quite similar to what you have when you use the active record, right? So the <coughs> um, mm -hmm. attribute reader um, and so on. But you can see that you mm -hmm. have like task. So you create the instance of this uh, class and then you can use method to get the state actually. But how you build the object, how you retrieve the state from the database is not like, um, like querying the database to get the latest um, version, latest state, but you actually fetch all the, <coughs> all the events in the event stream and you apply them on the object from the beginning, right? Uh, so about the streams themselves, we will probably have uh, another episode and how long the streams uh, should be um, and why not too long. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, for now, uh, we think this, uh, this example just uh, shows um, shows how the event sourcing works, right? So we create the, the object, we apply the events on, on, the, on the object, so we get the uh, state. And we actually can also get the state at some point, point of uh, in time, right? <clears throat> and that's really uh, nice. Um, yeah, uh, do we want to show anything else in the code, uh, Lukasz? No, just maybe one comment is that, uh, as you mentioned, Tomek, if the streams are too long, this will be very inefficient. And that's why I said in the beginning that this part of the approach where you build the object for the to, to display it in the UI, this is not the, uh, like the best way to do it. Because if your stream is too long, first of all, it's going to, going to take longer. But second of all, uh, taking into consideration how this model is built in the database, this is just a two tables, one with streams and one with the events. Uh, we'll get into the details probably in another episode uh, as well. But um, the point is that uh, it's not so efficient as it could be to read the data to display it. Uh, okay, and that was the last comment. When it comes to the code, I think we are done. I think it's time to move to the console and... Yeah, uh, about one, one more comment. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we can discuss, uh, you know, <laughs> longer here, but yeah, uh, just quickly. Uh, and about these UIs, right, uh, we already mentioned uh, read models, but one step at the time, we will get to them um, exactly. at some point, right? Um, and for now, we just uh, would like to show you, um, we would like to show you actually the uh, race event store console um, and the, the uh, web page that it has in the project. Uh, so as you can see here, for example, we are running some um, task app that you can um, clone from our GitHub uh, repository. And it has no events uh, now. But then if we go uh, to race console and we, for example, create a task service. We can call those methods that we created, right? So there will be task service, create task. And now <coughs> you can see that we uh, stored some of the uh, events and on the, and you can see the task created event uh, in our browser, racing and store browser. And for example, now we have the UUID of this task So we can assign it to task ID and we can also uh, 
change the name of this specific task. Our new name. And you can also see that now when we refresh <coughs> the page, we can see two events that were published. First one was about the creation of the uh, task. And you have task ID here. And the second one is about changing uh, the name for this specific uh, ID. <coughs> you can also see that uh, the stream here is this one, right? So task with the task ID. And I think that's all for now, uh, right, Lukash? Or is there anything left for this episode? Yeah, so uh, one last thing for this episode. Uh, let's create another task, which we will then complete. Um, okay. So uh, because just uh, what is important to see is that in event stores, there is usually, well, actually, let me rephrase that. There is always at least one stream, which is a global stream, which you don't have to specify. Uh, we'll get into those small nuances. However, uh, what you can also, what we, what is also interesting is to see that if we have two different tasks, that we will see all the events in the global stream, which is in, on the default page of the Rails event store. But also, if we are interested in just one task and want to see what events are inside, we can just go to the specific stream and see only the events that are related to this specific task. Yeah. Uh, so this <coughs> give you, will give you this this um, additional uh, advantage that we talked about in the previous video where we said that in the RDBMS, you would only see that the current name is just the um, do the CRUD. But in this approach, you would actually see how the name involved from the first one to the uh, to the later, I mean, you'll see all the changes, right? Which may be useful for the business. Well, maybe not the name of the task, but definitely in your application, you'll find something that will be interesting. Yeah, and uh, in meantime, I actually uh, was changing name. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> we will use this example here, but yeah, as you can see, I've created the second task here, which is task um, with this ID. <clears throat> and now, by going to the task stream, you can see that for this task, there were three events that um, changed the name of the task. And you can see the first one, the new <clears throat> name for a new task with this ID, yeah. And very new name at uh, this point of, uh, in time. And the third one, <clears throat> and another name here. So by looking at this um, stream with the UUID of the task, you can see uh, all the history of this uh, task. And now yes. I think we are done, right? Famous last words. Um, this model, there is something wrong with this model. So uh, if anyone can find it in the comments, uh, that would be great. I assume that there will be no comments at this stage. So uh, what I will say is that <laughs> in just... Come on. Uh, <laughs> okay, if there is at least one comment... My mom will <laughs> comment. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said, but uh, <laughs> let's... Uh, uh, we'll explain what's wrong with this model and why it is too big to just um, do such a simple, uh, simple task as... Uh, as managing the task status. Um, and actually, I'll tell you that there's a hint in the graph that was showed in the beginning by Tomek. And uh, yeah, all right. So uh, I guess that's it for today. Yep. So thank you very much for watching. Um, we would appreciate any feedback in the comments or you can catch us on the Twitter or LinkedIn or wherever you want to and you can find us. Just not in my apartment directly because that would be a little bit creepy. <laughs> um, right, ciao. See ya. Bye.